really helped me to, to, to focus my job search, uh, both in terms of jobs uh, that would be good for me uh, and in terms of getting referrals for opportunities. And so I became a passionate uh, advocate of LinkedIn at that point. Uh, I had been on LinkedIn for a long time before, but hadn't really used it. Um, and in a seven month employment year transition, I learned a lot about LinkedIn and now I, I, I share a lot about LinkedIn with my clients here in Calgary uh, and in Edmonton. Uh, and uh, so, yeah, I'm really excited about sharing uh, some of that information with you today. Eric, this is Katie. Um, just, uh, I don't know if you're stepping away from the mic, but it's going in and out a little bit. So if you could just stay close to your mic or if it's just the technology, that's also fine. Okay, is this better? Yep, that's clear. Awesome. So uh, apologies for that. Uh, so before we get into the presentation, just want to share a few numbers uh, related to LinkedIn. Uh, I'm not sure if you know, but there are 400 million users of LinkedIn around the world, which makes it the second biggest social network. Uh, I like to call it the, uh, the unsexy middle sibling of social media. Uh, it's not very exciting, but it's very, very reliable and it's uh, a very, very useful tool. Uh, 11 million Canadian users, which means that probably over half of the working population of Canada is, is on LinkedIn. 79% uh, of Washington insiders use it. And if you think about Washington, D.C., that's probably the biggest networking town or city in the world. And uh, you, obviously the numbers uh, show that it's, it's an important tool for that. Uh, and there, there are 45,000 standard skills listed. Um, we'll show you uh, the, the skills section later in the presentation. Um, but one of the things, actually before we get into this, can I ask, um, by, uh, by using the check mark or the X mark, uh, can I see how many of you are on LinkedIn already and how many of you are not on LinkedIn? So if you're not on LinkedIn, give me an X. If you are on LinkedIn, give me a check mark. Okay, so we're, it looks like we're, majority are on LinkedIn, uh, a few people who aren't yet. Uh, and can I ask, uh, let's uh, delete those. And um, if you are on LinkedIn already, uh, can you give me a check mark if you think you're using it to its full capability and give me an X if you think that there's still a lot that could be improved? <laughs> Well, that's uh, looking like, uh, yeah, okay. So, Katie, uh, you're a, a master. You've attended this training before. And, Sean, you're a master. Um, I don't know if you've attended this training or some other, but uh, for everybody else, this is, uh, there's going to be a bunch of stuff here that will hopefully be very useful to you. Um, for those of you who are on LinkedIn, can I ask you how many of you have a profile photograph? Okay, so there's a few people who don't and a few people who do. Uh, as you'll see on the screen here, um, a profile photo is going to result in 14 times more people looking at your profile. Uh, there seems to be an issue around the profile photo in terms of uh, developing a level of trust or a level of connection. Um, so if you don't have a photo, I would strongly encourage you to, to put one up. Um, I know that some people are concerned about uh, age being a factor or some other identifier, uh, but even so, um, that is information that will eventually be found out uh, anyway, and uh, it has been found that uh, you do get increased engagement through having a profile photo, so I would suggest that you do it. Uh, and when we get to the skills section, uh, we'll talk about how it is that uh, having skills listed is going to bring you 13 times more profile views. Um, and, uh, you know, the, basically if, if, if LinkedIn is about networking uh, and about being connected with people, then the more people looking at your profile, uh, the better. Okay. So. Um, why be on LinkedIn for those of you who aren't on yet? Um, and basically what most people will tell you is that it's all about personal branding. Uh, for me, I really don't like the term personal branding. It just sounds like market speak. Um, but if you think about branding, uh, as, instead of, of branding, think about it as reputation. Uh, you have an opportunity. Pardon? 
Can I just interrupt for a moment? Can I ask everybody to please mute your microphones by clicking on the microphone beside your name on the right-hand side of the panel so that we don't get feedback? Thank you. And je viens de Geneviève aussi. Great. Thank you. Okay. Sorry to interrupt. No, no worries. Okay. So, uh, you have a, a great opportunity with LinkedIn to, to create a reputation for yourself, uh, to maintain that reputation, to build that reputation. Uh, and I know for a fact that, you know, I will occasionally go to networking uh, events in Calgary and people will actually approach me and say, hey, you're Eric Pai, aren't you? And I'll be a bit confused and uh, uh, then I'll ask them how they know that. And uh, there are people that follow me on LinkedIn or have read an article that I either wrote or shared on LinkedIn, uh, or they participated in a group discussion with me. Uh, and, you know, I don't recognize uh, everybody because there's a lot of people on there, but, uh, um, you know, the more you're on there, the, the more you have an opportunity to actually um, get yourself to a point of being recognized uh, in your community, um, in your profession, and, uh, and for job seekers, uh, an opportunity to be recognized and perhaps selected for a position. Um, for a career practitioner, it's a, it's a wonderful tool for, for networking with your, your colleagues and peers. Uh, I would encourage you to connect with everybody that's on this, uh, on this webinar afterwards. Um, it's a great opportunity for learning uh, through sharing of articles, through reading articles that uh, colleagues have shared, uh, and it's a, a great uh, tool for, um, or a great tool to teach your clients uh, because for them it can also be a powerful tool for, for networking, for researching, again, for building that reputation. Uh, and for finding informational interviews that could potentially result in uh, better career direction or uh, a referral for a job. So uh, overview of the presentation, we're going to talk uh, uh, a fair amount about the LinkedIn profile, which is almost like your online uh, resume. Um, we'll talk about some do's and don'ts for that. I'm going to talk about how you can engage with others. Uh, through your homepage and through uh, actual the job search features of LinkedIn. Uh, and then we're going to talk about uh, relationships and uh, how you can uh, maintain relationships uh, with your current connections and, and people that you know already. Uh, and then uh, ways to grow your network for, for referrals or for uh, further learning uh, or just, uh, you know, um, to, especially for your clients. Uh, to, to meet people for these informational interviews that I spoke of. <clears throat> so a few reminders before we move on. Uh, LinkedIn is not Facebook. Uh, it is a professional network. Uh, things that you would share on Facebook are not appropriate for LinkedIn, and to a certain extent, the things that you share on LinkedIn will probably not get shared on your Facebook. Uh, you have to be very careful about sharing uh, overly personal information. Um, I've had some examples of, of clients who who overshared, and it has affected their ability to find work. Um, I had one guy who I actually had to give some coaching about uh, about removing some information from his Facebook after, or from his LinkedIn after he had been job searching for months and months and months and not getting anything. And he actually very quickly found a position as soon as he cleaned up his LinkedIn profile. Um, so uh, just an example there. Uh, one thing I think that people expect of LinkedIn is that because they've got this virtual uh, profile, this virtual resume, that they're going to get headhunted uh, into the million dollar job of their dreams. And one of the things you'll find is that uh, the, the headhunting aspect it does happen, but it typically is only going to happen if you have a very, very highly specialized skill set. Uh, so, for example, two years ago in Calgary, if you were a reservoir engineer, you would probably be getting headhunted every few days. Uh, now, with the economy the way it is, probably not so much. Uh, but, yeah, um, certain IT, IT people will get headhunted for the most part. Uh, the average Joe, like like you or me, is probably not going to get a lot of headhunting calls, but it is important to have a profile and to have a, a good profile because 19 out of 20 recruiters are going to vet candidates 
by looking at their LinkedIn profile. And if somebody has a poor LinkedIn profile, uh, that's going to create a negative impression. And if the person doesn't have a LinkedIn profile at all, uh, recruiters may be wondering about how tech savvy the, uh, the, app, the job applicant is uh, or why it is that they, they don't have a profile. Um, uh, the last thing to remember is that LinkedIn is not networking. I know for myself, I get very, very frustrated when I'm coaching one of my clients and I ask them if they're LinkedIn, sorry, if they're networking and they say, oh yeah, yeah, I have a LinkedIn profile. Uh, and then I ask them what they do with it and they say, well, nothing. Um, if you are going to be on there, you really should be making use of it. Uh, and it is a networking tool. It is not networking in and of itself. And again, hopefully through the presentation, we'll see some of the tools that you have at your disposal uh, that can be very, very powerful. Uh, so we'll start off with the profile. Um, and what you want to do is, is you want to make your profile as impactful as possible. Um, uh, this is kind of like a, a virtual advertisement for yourself. Um, when people are applying for jobs, I know that I'm always suggesting that they, they tailor their resume to the job that they're applying for. Uh, and that's okay with a job application because uh, an application is focused on a single position or a single company. Uh, with LinkedIn, you're not able to really tailor it because it's available for everybody to see. What you need to make sure is that it correlates with your resume, uh, but it has to be somewhat generic um, in, in presented. Basically, if it correlates in terms of the job titles and the dates and the employers, uh, that's great. Uh, by nature, the, the job descriptions will probably be fairly generic. Uh, and the big thing you want to be making sure with the profile is that it's, uh, it has good SEO or search engine optimization. Uh, you need to be using keywords uh, to your particular profession uh, so that if people do a search, uh, you're going to pop up as one of the first results because uh, the search terms are included somewhere in your profile. So we'll start out by just taking a look at uh, some basics of the profile, and then we'll talk about how you can go about setting these up. Um, when you open up your window, um, this is what you would see on my uh, LinkedIn profile when you open it up. Uh, for most people, the post section that you see at the bottom of the screen there will not be there. Uh, instead, there will be, uh, well, if you haven't got it set up well, it'll be your your current or your most recent job. Uh, one of the things you should do is insert a summary there, and I'll show you what that's going to look like in just a second. Um, but this section is what I call above the scroll. Uh, it's similar to a newspaper parlance where they talk about above the fold. Uh, the top half of the front page of a newspaper is what people see when they walk in and out of the supermarket. Uh, and on that uh, top half of the page is typically where you're going to get the exciting, eye-catching uh, uh, headline, and you're going to have some kind of uh, uh, picture that is going to draw attention and make people think that, yes, I really want to buy this newspaper. Uh, your LinkedIn profile should be the same, uh, because this is what's going to open up. Uh, this is what people will see uh, when they click through to your profile. And if they're going to invest time looking uh, by scrolling down the profile to look at more information, what you need to do is catch them in this above the scroll section to make them think that, wow, uh, yeah, this is somebody that's worth looking at. Um, so the first part of the above the scroll area is what I call the banner. Uh, and this is the, uh, the summary of, of uh, some of your, your general details. Uh, and a few things I want to point out um, is that you uh, need to, as, as I said, have a photograph. Uh, 14 times more people will click through if you do have a photograph. Uh, it shouldn't be a photograph of you on a beach or you with a cocktail in your hand. Uh, it shouldn't be, uh, say, a chopped in half photograph uh, that was taken with you and your spouse and their hand is on your shoulder and we don't see the spouse but we do see the hand. Uh, so, you know, try to make it a headshot. Um, it doesn't have to be a professional headshot. It could be a headshot taken by a friend on their, uh, on their smartphone. 
Um, but don't do it as a selfie because selfies give us interesting distortions and views up noses and all those kinds of things. Uh, have somebody else take the photo of you. Um, and as I said, professional wearing the kind of, uh, of clothing that you would wear on a typical work day. Um, the other area to notice is the, uh, the headline. Uh, in my case, it says career advisor at CPA Alberta, uh, resumes, LinkedIn, networking, interviews, workshop facilitation. Uh, the standard headline is going to be just your, uh, your job title and your employer. So the standard headline for me would be career advisor at CPA Alberta. Uh, you can change this, and I would strongly suggest that you do change this to add some of the areas that you see as your key skills or your key interest areas. Uh, and what it's going to do is it's going to mean that when a person takes a look at your uh, at your banner uh, for the first time, they immediately have an insight into what it is that you're interested in, uh, what it is that you like to do, what it is that you're good at doing. Uh, the other information is pretty much going to be um, standard. Uh, the current employment will be there, the previous employment, the education. Uh, those can be changed. Uh, but they are populated automatically by LinkedIn. So that part of the, of the setup is, is actually quite easy. Um, I have a publishing section as the second part of my profile. Most people won't have that unless they have actually published some articles. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this during this presentation. Uh, but if you uh, do blog at all, uh, if you have a blog, uh, it's, uh, it's a nice idea to copy and paste your, those blog, uh, blog postings into your actual LinkedIn profile. Uh, it's going to allow people to see your expertise. It's going to allow people to see your ideas. Uh, and uh, in terms of building and maintaining that reputation for yourself as a professional, it's a really, really great way to do that. Uh, it's also something that uh, if you are connecting with your clients, they're then able to, uh, you know, get the benefit of your, uh, of your uh, information or your knowledge uh, without you necessarily having to talk with, it, talk with them about it every single time. What you can do is you can refer them to an article and say, hey, you know, read this and uh, then, you know, maybe in our next session we can have a chat about it. Um, but you're saving time. Uh, you're, you're being efficient in terms of that knowledge transfer. What most people will have as the second part up there above the scroll is a summary. Uh, and so this is where you're basically encapsulating what it is that you like to do uh, and, uh, and, and letting people have a really good idea of, of, of your role. Um, this is a personal preference, and I think if you ask any LinkedIn expert or not so expert what they think should be in the summary, you'll probably, if you ask 20 people, you'll get 40 different answers. Uh, in my personal, uh, my, my personal preference and the way that I've chosen to do my summary is to define the problem that I solve, then develop my credibility with uh, some information about my background and my, my training and education. Uh, and then I've put a call to action, which is uh, basically, in my case, because I primarily work with designated accountants in Alberta, I've specified that if they are uh, a member of that group, uh, anybody who's reading my profile, uh, if they're looking uh, to, you know, um, develop career plans or if they're struggling with a job search to reach out to me. Uh, and calls to action have uh, been shown to increase engagement uh, uh, vastly. Uh, so it's a, it's a good thing to, to finish off your summary with is uh, a call to action to the, the people that would be your clients uh, and invite them to connect with you. Um, this takes a little bit of thought. Um, uh, you know, uh, I think for a lot of you, you could probably use something very similar to what I have here because you're all in the career development uh, industry in some way. Um, but yeah, really have a think about what is the problem that you solve and then uh, the credibility building. Uh, that's kind of a, a summary of, of your resume in many ways. Uh, the, the, the work areas you've, you've been in, the education you have, uh, and the, the kind of information that is going to develop trust uh, and respect from the, the potential clients that you're going to be dealing with. Um, 
this is something that I have added to my summary is uh, this is you would have to you would scroll down and you would see this tagged on to the end of my summary. Um, but another way to really uh, develop your reputation is to actually show off your work. So if you've created presentations that you use with your clients uh, or for other purposes, uh, if you've developed worksheets, uh, you can upload these to LinkedIn. Uh, and again, your clients or people that might be interested in hiring you or, or anything like that, they're going to be able to see examples of your work. Uh, and that's actually probably the best way to convince people that you know what you're about. If they see your work and they see that it's good work, uh, then you don't have to explain yourself, really. Um, next thing that's going to come up in your profile, and at this point we've been so excited by the banner that we've decided, yes, I'm going to take a further look at this person. Uh, as we scroll down, we're going to get to the most recent or current role. Uh, and you can see that this section looks very much like what you'd see in a resume. So we have our uh, job title, we have our employer, we have our employment dates, uh, and then we've got a listing of our duties. Uh, and this could be achievement-based, it could be activity-based, uh, it depends on, on how you want to present yourself. Uh, for me right now, mine is just activity-based, and it's, I'm using this partly to market myself to potential clients so that they know what it is that I can do for them. Uh, I haven't really focused on achievements because right now I'm not job searching. Uh, another section of the job descriptions that is important is the recommendations. And similar to your work speaking volumes about you, uh, other people speaking volumes about you is going to be uh, uh, as if not more effective than you saying good things about yourself. Uh, so we can see here at the bottom, Janice Kabelski and Elmian and Wingert have both uh, recommended me. Uh, they provided their feedback on my work. Uh, and if you can get a recommendation or several for each and every job on your profile, uh, then that really is going to, uh, to build your, your reputation as well. Next we see uh, previous positions. And uh, again, this is a style thing for myself. Uh, it, you don't have to follow this. Your clients don't have to follow this. But uh, in my mind, uh, previous roles are not as important as current roles uh, unless you're looking to return to a previous uh, career or a previous uh, position type. Um, you'll notice that for my previous role, I haven't actually listed any of my job duties. Uh, and in this case, uh, the minimal detail is because in my mind, less is more. Um, if you see my job title of Corporate Training Advisor, I'm guessing you can imagine 50, 60, 70 percent of what I did. You don't have the details, but you have an idea of what I did. Uh, this is an area where if you are, uh, if a recruiter is looking at your profile and they are interested in you for a position that uh, they're currently looking to fill, not giving details is actually going to be helpful to you because it, it, it extends the curiosity. Uh, if you have too much detail or a lot of detail, the recruiter is likely going to be able to answer all of the questions that they have about you in terms of your suitability for a position. Uh, the lack of detail means that the job title perhaps is, is uh, hinting that I might be a good candidate but the lack of detail is, is what's going to motivate the recruiter to actually reach out to me and have some, some kind of a conversation. Uh, and so, yeah, it's, it's kind of like a first date. You don't tell your date everything about you. You just tell them the good stuff. Uh, you leave a lot of things uh, as a uh, kind of like a, a secret or something to be found out on a future date. Looks like we have a question. How does this type of profile work for someone who has a large variation of skills in previous employment? Um, so uh, if you have a, a long career, and mine is relatively long, uh, one of the good things about reducing the amount of detail in the, the job descriptions is that uh, scrolling through your career is going to be a lot easier. Um, in terms of a variety of skills in previous employment, uh, basically I think if, if if you have someone who is focused on getting a particular kind of position, uh, what I would do is, is highlight perhaps some, uh, some uh, job details in the positions in their history that are related to what they're looking for. 
and perhaps reduce the focus on positions that don't really relate to what they're looking for now. Uh, and a lot of that can be described in the summary uh, and in the, the banner headline. Uh, I, I hope that answers the question somewhat. Um, feel free to follow up, Dana, if, you, if I haven't answered that question. Um, again, we see the recommendations here, uh, and so these are going to, to help us uh, in terms of people uh, being able to see. Uh, another question, how far back in your job history do you go? Uh, on my job history, I've actually gone back to the early 90s. Uh, with resumes, the suggestion is that you don't go back more than about 10 or 15 years. Uh, and so, you know, that might be a good uh, general rule to follow with LinkedIn as well, is, is go back to 10 or 15 years and then stop. Uh, and that's going to reduce any chances that ageism is going to be an issue uh, for, for um, a person's profile. Um, so once you've scrolled through all of the job descriptions and, uh, and the job section, uh, there will be an education section, uh, which I haven't got in the presentation, but that's going to be, again, very similar to what you have in your resume. Uh, if you have a degree or a qualification from more than, let's say, 20 years ago, what I would do is omit the dates from that qualification so that people are uh, less able to precisely uh, figure out your age. Uh, but the next section of the profile that is important is the, uh, the skill section, which we can see here. Um, the skill section is searchable. Uh, it's searchable by recruiters. It's also searchable by Google. Uh, so if a recruiter was to do a, an advanced search for a particular skill set, uh, they're going to get results back, uh, which are going to be ordered based on how many of the skills in that set uh, the, the results have. Uh, and so the more skills you have listed, the, the more chance you have of, of being found in that uh, advanced skill search. You can see here that in my skills section, the first 10 skills uh, are listed um, at the top. Uh, and on the right there, we can see uh, some of the people that have endorsed me for these skills. Um, Endorsements are just basically a very, very easy way for your connections to affirm uh, that they believe you have this particular skill. Uh, and so it's, uh, it's a very, very quick and easy way for a recruiter who's looking at you to kind of assess um, the, the kind of impact that you've made uh, with your skills and the belief that your connections have in your abilities. The top 10 are probably the most important because they're highly visible. You'll see ben below that I also know about, and then I have a listing of, I think it's about another 15 skills there. Uh, and then you can see in the bottom right-hand corner where it says C22+, plus, and those are 22 more skills that I've listed. You can list up to 50 skills. And I think for most people, they probably would imagine, well, 50 skills, I, I can't possibly think of, of 50 skills. Uh, but in actual fact, if you split those skills into uh, technical, soft skills and some IT skills, uh, you, will, um, you will pretty quickly be able to come up with at least 30 or 40 skills. Whether you can reach the maximum of 50 uh, is, is debatable, uh, but you should be trying to max those out. Uh, again, uh, it's all about being searchable. I'll show you how to set those up in just a second. In fact, we'll show you that right now in the profile setup. Uh, so the first thing is, is that when you, uh, when you go into your profile, uh, your, your profile is automatically going to be in edit mode. Uh, so uh, when you uh, hover over a text entry area, uh, it's going to uh, automatically uh, become, uh, you, you can uh, enter new text, you can change text. I'll show you that in just a second. Uh, the big thing to do, though, is if you take a look at the bottom right hand of, the of uh, my profile screen here, it says notify your network, and I've got that sh uh, switched to no. Uh, the reason for this is that um, if, you, if you have that switched to yes, then basically every change that you make to your profile is going to be announced to all of your connections. Uh, and if you're making a lot of changes in a very short time, 
all of those connections are quite likely going to become a little ticked off with you because you're flooding their homepage with, uh, with updates. Um, so switch it to know if you are going to make a lot of changes. If you're just going to change one or two things, then you can leave it with a yes, and that may remind your connection that you exist. Um, another thing is if you take a look in the top right of your profile, you can see that we have this fishbowl, uh, which is telling me that I'm an all-star. Um, you'll have a pretty good idea of, of how good your profile strength is by looking at this section, uh, because the more things you have missing, uh, the less water you're going to have in your fishbowl, uh, and it's going to be telling you that you need to, you know, add this information, add that information. You don't have to add absolutely everything, um, but uh, it's, it is good to try to get that fishbowl uh, relatively full. Uh, is everything okay there? Oops, okay. Um, so uh, there's, uh, let's take a look now at the, uh, uh, changing some of the different sections. Eric, there is one question. Oh, what was that? Uh, how far back in your job history should you be going? Right. Um, I thought I'd answered that. We already answered that, yeah. Great. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Um, yeah. So uh, here we can see if, you, uh, if you're hovering over uh, the banner section at the top, it's going to turn blue. Uh, any section that has a little uh, pencil mark next to it is uh, a field that can be changed. Uh, so if I had a designation, I could uh, go up to my name and I could insert the designation after my name uh, where you see the pencil there. Uh, you've got the change photo section there. Uh, if you're going to be, if you don't have a photo, it'll tell you to add photo, not change photo. Um, you're also going to want to check that your contact information is, uh, is revealing information that you want people to know uh, and not giving away too much so you can be stalked or, or reached or found if you don't want to be. So uh, if you click on the, uh, the contact information link, you get this drop dropdown. Uh, we can see here that I've listed my, uh, my, my work email, not my home email. I've listed my work phone. I've listed a few of my social media uh, that people can, can find me at. Um, with the email, if you have, if you yourself or if you have clients who are concerned about privacy and about, you know, people being able, uh, you know, spamming them or something like that, one of the suggestions I have is that you create an email address that is specific to only your LinkedIn. Uh, that way, if you do have to change the email address because you are getting spammed or there's some other kind of issue. Uh, you can change it very easily, create a new account, change the address on your LinkedIn, but you don't have to then go and notify all of your friends and family that you've changed your email address. Uh, and we all know that when that happens that you lose track of half of your friends and family because they don't pay attention to your email change. Uh, so uh, just a little uh, a tip there. The other thing you want to do is, uh, if you look at the bottom left there, you can see this is my LinkedIn uh, web address or URL, uh, and you'll see that my URL ends with my name, Eric Pine. Uh, the standard for LinkedIn is to actually have a combination of name and a bunch of numbers, uh, and those are a little bit difficult if you have that listed on a resume, for example, for people to be able to follow. Uh, or to be able to, to input when they're looking to go to your profile page. So uh, what you probably want to do is to personalize that URL. And so if you click on that URL, it'll take you to a page where you can, um, as it says here, enhance your personal brand by creating a custom URL. Uh, if you click on that blue pencil, it'll then give you an opportunity to to change the, the ending part of the URL, uh, try different versions of your name. If your name is common, the, it may be taken already, but then you can just try different combinations. So I could try epi, I could try e underscore pi, or, or something like that, uh, until you get one that, uh, that is going to work for you. Uh, and then you can choose that as your URL, and everything will be simpler. Uh, on this page, you can also customize your public profile, which is the profile that people who are not uh, LinkedIn members can see if they search for you. Uh, you can make your public profile visible or invisible, and you can also control which information is shown about you. So uh, if you do want to hide anything, uh, you can do that uh, in this section. 
Uh, with the skills, if you want to add skills, if you don't have any or if you just have a few and want to, to add a few more, uh, if you go to the top right there to the Add Skill button, if you click that, you will then get a window that looks like this uh, with an entry window in the middle. You can see where I've started to type in the word social. Um, when you start typing in a skill, what LinkedIn will do is it will, oops, sorry, we've got another, do these specifics cost funds? Um, I'm not sure exactly what the specifics are that you're referring to there? Well, when you're when you're able to do all these editing, uh, do you have to have a special LinkedIn, or is it all in the free LinkedIn? Uh, this is all in the free LinkedIn. I have a free LinkedIn account. Um, I did try the paid one for a month because I got the free month offer that they always give people, and. Um, I decided that everything that the free account offered me, I was able to do uh, through workarounds. Uh, and so I decided that I wasn't going to pay for, for LinkedIn. And uh, so, yeah, I'm fine with the free account and everything I'm showing you is available with the free account. Um, when you are adding a skill, what LinkedIn is going to do is it's going to give you skill suggestions with a drop down. So you can see we've got social media, social media marketing, social networking, and so on. Uh, what I would suggest you do is uh, always choose something from the drop-down because those are presented in their order of popularity, both in terms of usage by people on LinkedIn and also by recruiters when they're doing searches. If you get to the end of typing in your skill and you haven't got anything in the drop-down, it means that nobody else on, in LinkedIn land has that skill listed and it's probably never ever been searched for either. Uh, so always choose something from that. If the options that you're looking for don't appear in the drop-down, then just keep typing and uh, the ones that don't fit will disappear and uh, you'll hopefully get focused in on the ones that you do want to be listing. Once you've got the, the title, if you click on whatever the drop-down one is, uh, then you can click the Add uh, button and that, uh, that skill will be added to your bucket of skills which appears below that window. That bucket looks like this. Uh, and you'll see that uh, the numbers next to each skill, those indicate how many people have endorsed me. Uh, and you'll see that some of the endorsements, I, I have 99 plus and some of them I have less. I've chosen to relegate some of the highly endorsed skills because they're things that I did in my previous position that I'm not really interested in doing anymore. I still want them listed, but I don't want them to be in that top 10 that I showed you before. Uh, and if you want to uh, get particular skills into your top 10, uh, you can just uh, click on the skill and you can move those around uh, and everything else will shift around it. And when you have the order that you want, then you can click the save button at the bottom, okay? Um, let me see, so May Reimer, comments from our younger clients is that LinkedIn shows generation youth did not use LinkedIn, is this right assumption? Um, it, yeah, there, there are relatively few youths on LinkedIn, um, but they're not precluded from being on. And I think if, if youths join LinkedIn, I think it's going to give them a massive advantage over other youths, uh, just in terms of, uh, you know, being able to set up, and we'll, we'll talk about the informational interviews later. You know, if you have youths who are looking for summer jobs, if you can imagine me being a manager at a company uh, looking to hire a summer student, and I've, I've met a student uh, who came to talk with me about my career a couple of months ago uh, and showed great interest in what I do and in learning more about my company uh, versus a bunch of people who apply for jobs online. Um, the person that came for a visit with me, I think, is, is going to be top of mind. Uh, and I would actually, if I was looking to hire a, a, a student for the summer or, or for a part-time job, I might even be contacting them saying, hey, you know, it was great meeting you for the informational interview. I have a position available. Would you be interested? Um, so I think uh, similar to adult uh, job seekers, I think youth can, can really benefit. And I know that my niece, who is now 19 in her first year of university, uh, I've coached her on LinkedIn and she's now on there and she managed to get herself a summer job uh, through one of her professors uh, in a role that the professor has never given to a first year student before. It's always been a third or a fourth year student. 
Um, and so her networking has, has really brought her advantages and accelerated potentially the kinds of jobs she'll be able to get um, uh, going forward. Um, so we'll leave skills there. Uh, and so by this point, you should have a pretty, uh, pretty vibrant, uh, pretty impactful uh, profile section. Uh, so let's move on to um, how you can engage with your connections and engage with employers. Um, so the first thing is through your homepage, and this I think is the section that looks the most like Facebook uh, and where people get the most confused with Facebook. Uh, I'm going to just divide this section into top left, top right, and then the, the rest of the, of the homepage, uh, and just talk about some of the things available to you in those different sections. Uh, so in the top right section, if you have shared articles or if you want to check what you've done on LinkedIn, you can click on your recent activity link and that'll then give you a listing of uh, things that you've liked, things that you've shared, uh, things that you've responded to. Uh, and so if you are looking for something that uh, has, has gotten lost, uh, that's a great place to start. Um, the, the, the bar across the middle there, sharing an update, is very similar to Facebook. If you want to update your friends on Facebook, you share an update. Uh, the mechanism on LinkedIn is pretty much exactly the same. Uh, the same thing with uploading a photo. If you want to, if you have a, a photo that is professional, so for example, it's Friday and you want to share uh, some kind of a professional comic or, or a quote or something, you can upload a photo of it. Uh, and then on the right-hand side there is the link to, to, to click on if you want to publish an article. Uh, and as I said, I'm not going to go into that in detail, but it's fairly self-explanatory uh, if you do decide you want to do that. Uh, to me, one of the uh, interesting sections here is the people who have viewed your profile. Sorry, just had to uh, my whistle there. Um, so if people have looked at your profile, this can be an indication that they were interested in what they saw. Uh, and so um, I like to keep track of who has looked at my profile. Uh, I can see which of my connections uh, are looking. I can see if a recruiter has looked at my profile. And certainly if a recruiter has looked at my profile, um, I'm thinking that perhaps there was, uh, there was a, I, was, I came up in a search result. Maybe they found something in my profile that they weren't overly happy with or that they thought didn't fit the position they're looking to recruit. Uh, but I would still like to perhaps connect with them uh, in some way just because they may be looking for positions in the future that are going to be a good fit for me. So if I click on that number 10 there, I'm going to get taken to the section where I can see the people that have looked at my profile. Uh, here you can see, um, we're able to see with a free account, we can see the last five people that looked at us. Um, in most cases, if you're checking your LinkedIn on a daily basis and you're not a power user, it's unlikely that you'll have more than five people looking at your profile. Uh, so if you check this once a day, um, you, you shouldn't have to miss anybody. This is one of the things where they try to sell you on getting the paid version of LinkedIn because you can see everybody that ever looked at you. Uh, but as I said, in my opinion, if you're checking daily, you're unlikely to miss uh, anyone or too many people. And so, um, you know, uh, this should be fine. Uh, we can see here that let's imagine I met Noel Tsang at, uh, at a meeting yesterday. I forgot her name. Uh, but I see that she looked at my profile. Because she has a picture, I am going to remember her and go, oh, no, that's right, that's what her name was. And I may now be uh, uh, tempted to connect with her. Uh, you can see on the right-hand side that I had two people look at me who don't have pictures. And so if I had met one or two of those people, um, there's no way of me knowing if I forgot their name because I can't see their picture and so I don't have that, that visual reminder there. Um, anyway, if a recruiter had looked at me, what I would then do is go to their profile, see if they have contact details, uh, and try to connect back with them uh, and perhaps find out, you know, what it was that interested in them and uh, why it was that they didn't kind of reach out to me uh, and go on from there. So you have another question. Um, can the average person create an effective LinkedIn profile without additional coaching or help? Uh, yes, I think so. Um, if you want to share this LinkedIn pro, uh, presentation with them, you're welcome to do that. Um, you know, I think if someone has some, some input from a career practitioner like yourselves, 
uh, who's giving them some, some feedback and just giving them some tips on things that they should and shouldn't be including, uh, I think it's quite possible uh, to do it uh, on your own. Uh, with the 92 messages and 12 people uh, at the top of my screen, uh, yeah, so the 92 messages I have, act those are messages that LinkedIn is telling me I haven't read. I have read them because all of my messages get forwarded to my uh, email address. Uh, I just haven't responded to them through LinkedIn, and so LinkedIn hasn't uh, registered that I have actually read them. The 12 people on the top of the screen, those are 12 people that have uh, requested to be connected with me, and I have not yet decided whether I'm going to accept their connection request or not. Uh, and I'm going to show you uh, why I haven't uh, made that decision yet in just a second. So if you can just hold off on that question, uh, I'll come back to it. So then we take a look at the top right, and again, we can see the 92 messages there, and we can see the 12 people who've asked to connect with me. Uh, as I said, I'll talk about that in a second. Uh, but the other section that it's going to suggest there is people you may know. Um, basically, LinkedIn is a very, very powerful database. Uh, it has an idea of everybody who knows everybody. And so what it's going to do is it's going to try to help me increase my connections by suggesting people where there's a high probability that I know them. And this is typically because we have several common connections. If I click on people you may know, I will get taken to a page that looks like this. And you can scroll and scroll and scroll and spend an, an entire Sunday morning looking at these. Uh, again, the importance of the photograph. Arnie Resnick, if I've ever met him, I'm not going to remember based on not seeing his picture. Mark Mertens, I have met him. Uh, and since I did this presentation, I have actually connected with him. Uh, if you're interested in seeing who your common connections are, you can click on that little overlapping circle with the three. Uh, so for Matt Riskin, we can see the three people that are common connections for us. Uh, and so now I know why he's being suggested as a connection. Uh, one thing I'm going to suggest is that if you do want to connect with somebody from this page, do not click the Connect button. Uh, and I'll, I'll tell you why in just a second. Uh, you're better off uh, to, go, to click on the person's picture, get taken to their profile page, and then connect with them from their profile page rather than this, this connect button that kind of screams at you to hit it. Uh, but actually, the reason you don't want to do that is because it, it doesn't allow you to personalize your connection request. And I'll show you why that's important in just a sec. Uh, then we get to the, uh, the general scrollable homepage, which is where people have shared articles or shared status updates. Again, very similar to Facebook. You can like things. You can comment. You can share. Uh, and you know, um, this is one way to very, very uh, easily uh, continue to, to be engaging with your connections. When you like the things that they've shared, they get a little shot of adrenaline. When you comment or share something that they've shared, again, they get that little shot of adrenaline. And certainly in the comments section, if you can get into discussions with people, this is a great way, again, to, uh, to highlight your skills, highlight your knowledge. Uh, and develop that reputation for yourself. Uh, you will also have uh, articles uh, suggested to you by LinkedIn. Uh, these are typically going to be based on uh, your skills that you've listed, the job titles that you've had, and LinkedIn will use its algorithms to decide which articles you would be likely uh, interested in. Uh, and so these are typically from uh, their influencers, so people like Richard Branson or, uh, you know, uh, various other famous people will, will, will blog on LinkedIn as well. So that's your home page. Now we'll take a quick look at job search. Uh, and so certainly for your clients, this is going to be uh, a useful section. Very similar to Workopolis or to Indeed or to any other job search portal. Um, here we can see uh, a job search where the person has typed in the word accounting, uh, and we've come up with a, a bunch of different jobs uh, listed there. Uh, you can scroll through and see if there's, a, if there's a particular job that interests you. You can click on that and be taken to the actual posting. Uh, you can see down the left-hand side that you have several tools for filtering. Uh, so you can filter to a postal code and the distance from that postal code. 
Uh, you can filter to companies. You can filter to specific job titles. Uh, and then LinkedIn will present you a, a much shorter list of, of, of opportunities. When you click, if you click, for example, on the top one here, the production accounting analyst, that'll take you to the actual job post. Uh, and the one nice, one, two of the nice things about the job postings on LinkedIn, first is that you can apply directly from LinkedIn. And second is that you can actually uh, potentially reach out to the recruiter that posted the, the, the job. You can see in the top right-hand side that that is Renata uh, here. Um, so if you have the paid version of LinkedIn, you could send her an in-mail. In uh, if you don't have the paid version, what you could do is you could click on her name or picture, and that will take you to her profile page. Uh, I haven't shown the whole profile, but on the right-hand side of Renata's profile page, it's going to give me information about how I'm connected to her. And we can see here that I have a common connection with Renata. And so if I wanted to maybe connect with Renata and ask her some questions about the job or perhaps uh, ask for a meeting or, or a telephone call so that we could, we could talk more about uh, questions that I have, uh, I could contact Jeff and ask him to contact Renata uh, and do an introduction for me so that I could, could have a chat with her. So this is a pretty, uh, pretty fun tool uh, with the job search. Uh, it also means that you're able to uh, apply a name to a cover letter, which uh, I know with my clients I'm always telling them, uh, try to find the name of the person that you're sending the cover letter to. In this case, it's quite obvious. Uh, if we click the Apply Now button, we're going to get a pop-up, which gives us some, uh, some information. Uh, so we can apply uh, directly for the job. Uh, you can see that it's going to confirm some of my contact information. Uh, it's going to allow me to upload a resume and cover letter, uh, and then I can submit that and my, my application has been sent. Um, a PowerPoint presentation. Uh, I don't have this as a PowerPoint, but I do have an old one that I'd be willing to share with, uh, with Katie later if you're interested. Uh, alternatively, I can also share her share the link to this presentation with Katie, and she can send that out to you guys. Uh, and you know, I'd, I'd be happy if, if you wanted to use it uh, for for your purposes. Uh, so that's the job searching uh, ability within LinkedIn. Uh, so uh, a powerful tool. Now let's move on to actually connecting and networking. Uh, and there's two different groups of, of people that. Uh, that you're going to be looking to connect with. One is the people that you already know, uh, and the other is people that you haven't met yet but would perhaps like to meet because they might be useful to your job search or to your research. Uh, so we'll look at connecting with people you know already. Um, so when you want to connect with somebody, let's say you met somebody at a networking meeting yesterday, uh, or you, um, you know, you, you've heard about a person from several of your colleagues and they've suggested that you connect with this person, uh, if you do a search uh, at the top, uh, what LinkedIn will do is they'll do a drop-down of, of all the people that have the same name. Uh, and in this particular case, again, um, having a picture is useful because I can see here immediately Mike Morrison, who I'd like to connect because I just met him at a recent event. Uh, he's a short, balding man. And we can see that the picture next to Mike Morrison at the top of the list there is a, a balding man, and he looks very much like Mike. So I'm going to click on on him, and I'm going to get taken to his profile. On the profile, uh, you can see we have the connect button there, uh, and I would suggest that when you are trying to connect with people that you always do it from their profile page because you are able to uh, personalize the message. So I'm going to click the connect button there, and it's going to give me this connection window. Uh, and LinkedIn is very, very kind. Uh, in that they've already uh, provided me with a personal note, uh, which is actually not so personal because it's the note that everybody sends. Uh, and if you're wondering about the 12 people that I haven't accepted their connection request from, uh, it's because they use this note. And I kind of have this personal philosophy that uh, I don't, uh, I, I prefer not to uh, accept connection requests from uh, people that haven't told me how they know me and why they want to be connected with me. Um, so what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to click in that uh, personal note window and you're going to want to tailor the message to the person that you're connecting with. 
so here is a better message. Um, I met Mike at the social summit, which was a social media uh, conference. Um, I wanted to talk with him more about Facebook and Twitter marketing because that's not an area that I'm a, an expert in uh, and I'd like to be connected. So now I'm reminding Mike of who I am. I'm giving him, giving him a very clear reason for or purpose for the connection. Uh, and this is actually going to increase the chance that the person is going to accept my connection request. Um, you're going to have to also select how you know Mike. Uh, so I'm going to say that we've done business together and then I have a drop down there for choose company and I'll choose my current employer. Uh, if you were classmates or if you're a colleague, you can choose that option and it's going to ask you for which school it was or which company it was that you worked together at. Uh, and I'm going to suggest, well, if you're friends, you can select that one. Uh, but if you don't have one of those four reasons for connecting, then I'm going to suggest that you not actually connect. Uh, if you select the other option, it's going to tell you that you have to give uh, that person's email address. Uh, and if you don't know the email address, then it's not going to allow you to make the connection. Uh, and so for, for strangers, uh, I'm going to suggest uh, the method that I'm going to show in just a second, which is how to connect with people that you don't know yet. Anyway, with this, once you've uh, selected how you know them, you've, you've tailored your message, uh, then you're going to click the send invitation at the bottom, and hopefully within a few minutes, hours, or days, the person will accept your connection request, and then you will be connected on LinkedIn. And at that point, they're part of your Rolodex. And so, for example, oh, sorry, uh, one other thing. Uh, when you're connecting from your mobile phone, uh, again, you're going to want to make sure that you connect from the person's profile page, not from any other connection option. Uh, and on the profile page on a smartphone, the connect button is not actually going to give you the option to tailor your message. It's just going to send the standard uh, connection request. What you want to do is go to the top right-hand corner there where you see the three dots. That's the options uh, button. Click on that. And then what will happen is your, the smartphone app will give you the option to customize the invite, and you can click on that, and it'll then give you uh, a, a pop-up very similar to what we saw on the website there, where you can change the message, uh, tell the person how you know them, why you want to connect, uh, and then send the, uh, send the invite, uh, and it will be personalized. Once you're connected, uh, you're going to have a whole bunch of information at your fingertips about the person that you're connected with. If you go to that person's profile, uh, you can see there's a button there for send a message, so you can uh, personal message back and forth with the person. Uh, you're going to have uh, access to their contact information at all times. Uh, and you also have uh, relationship reminders, so you can, uh, you can write yourself notes about the person to remind you of something, so, you know, has three kids or really likes dark chocolate or whatever, uh, you can set reminders. So if this is a very, very important contact, then might you, what you might want to do is set yourself a reminder to connect with them or, or send them a message uh, on the first of every month or something like that. You can make notes about how you met. Uh, and you can also tag people. And by tagging, what you can do is you can assign people to, to groups. Uh, so you could have a tag for career people, you could have a tag for HR people, you could have a tag for oil and gas or whatever you want to set as your tags. And that's a way for you, you to organize your, your contacts. So a whole bunch of things you can do there with the people that you know already. <clears throat> now we move on to people that you would like to meet. And this, I think, is uh, it's a great tool for career practitioners, but I think uh, it's also very, very important as a tool for job seekers. Uh, especially if they are new to a community and they don't really have a solid network set up yet. Uh, and my understanding from talking with Katie is that for a lot of you, uh, that is the boat that, that your clients are in. Um, so if they can uh, somehow meet face-to-face -face with people in the industries or companies or jobs that they're interested in pursuing, uh, they can do some real good research about uh, the town or city where they're now uh, living. Uh, they can learn a little bit about how, you know, networking works in that city, uh, if there's any good meetings to go to, uh, and get themselves known uh, within their industry by people who actually work in it. Um, 
so yeah, getting advice, uh, getting access to the hidden job market. We all know that a lot of the jobs these days are not actually uh, advertised anywhere, that they're going to be uh, filled through networking. Uh, and through these meetings, you can potentially get referrals for, for meetings or jobs. Um, in my particular job search four years ago, uh, the week that I was offered the job that I have now, I had three different people contacted me, contact me who I had networked with in the months leading up to that, uh, all of them basically telling me that there was a, a new position internally announced at their company uh, and that they thought I would be a good candidate and uh, telling me that if, if I was interested in the position that they would be willing to take my resume down to HR and I was almost guaranteed an interview. Uh, so that was certainly going to increase my chances of getting one of those positions. So how do you do it? Um, one of the things I'm going to suggest, uh, particularly for your clients, and you may be suggesting them to, the, them to this already, is to kind of create a hit list of, of companies or, or jobs or, or something, uh, usually companies that they would be interested in working at. Uh, and what they want to do is they want to try to meet uh, some actual people that work at those companies. Uh, and so once they've got their hit list, they can do this kind of process for each uh, company on that list. Um, here we're going to imagine that the person is interested in working at the United Way of Calgary. So they start typing in United Way Calgary and we're going to select that uh, next to the company's uh, label there. And that's going to take us to the company uh, LinkedIn page. Uh, and so here we can do some research about United Way of Calgary. Uh, we can see their recent updates. Um, some companies will have a careers uh, tab that people can click on and see the jobs that are available there. Uh, to me, the most important section of this page, though, is the top right hand where we have the how you're connected. Uh, and so we can see here that I don't have any first degree connections at United Way. Uh, first degree connection is somebody that I know personally and I'm connected with them on LinkedIn. Uh, but I have 78 second degree connections. And the 78 uh, second degree connections, these are people where LinkedIn through the, the connection database that they have is able to tell me that I know somebody who knows each of these 78 people. If I want to find out who it is that I know, uh, that we know in common, uh, that's potentially a person who could make an introduction for me. I'm going to click on the number 78, and that is going to take me to a listing of all of those second degree connections. Uh, you can see on the left hand side that I'm able to filter these. Uh, so I could filter these to the Calgary area, and that's going to delete some of the people who are outside of Calgary. Uh, and I can then scroll down uh, the, the people in this list and look for people that do something similar to what I do or people that I think might be able to help me uh, with a meeting. In this particular case, just as an example, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to, I, I want to meet with Jeff Pearson. Uh, and so we can see for Jeff Pearson that we have five shared connections there. Uh, and if I click on that link of the five shared connections, Sorry. Um, I then get a drop down, uh, and we can see here that three of those connections are shown. Uh, and if I want to view all five, I can click on the view all view all five shared, uh, and I'll be able to see all the five people that I know that know Jeff. Um, now, looking at this list, uh, Daryl, I'm connected with, but I've never actually met him. Uh, Stephanie, I'm connected with, and I have met her, but uh, uh, we don't necessarily get along that well. Uh, Adam is somebody that I have met several times, and he's a good guy, and I think, uh, you know, he and I have talked career advising before, so uh, he would probably be quite supportive of me in, in doing an introduction to Jeff. So I'm now going to reach out to Adam, and I'm going to send him a message either by email or uh, within LinkedIn, and I'm going to ask for an introduction. And here is a copy of a of kind of like a, a form uh, message that you could send, something similar to this. So, hi, Adam. I saw on LinkedIn that you know Jeff Pearson at United Way. I'm wondering if you would introduce me. I'd like to learn a bit about, a bit about United Way and their operations. If you can make an introduction, please let Jeff know that I only need 15 to 20 minutes. I'm happy to meet anywhere. Coffee's on me. Looking forward to hearing back from you. Regards, Eric. So, I would send this message to Adam. Uh, you'll notice that I haven't uh, put anything in here about getting a job. 
Uh, reason for that being that if there isn't a job uh, with that Jeff Pearson's able to refer to me to, then perhaps there's no reason for a meeting. Uh, the purpose of the meeting, uh, I think, if you if if you want to uh, increase the chance that people will accept your meeting, is to make it something where you're going to be learning, uh, where there's no pressure on them to provide anything other than subject matter expertise, uh, and that way the pressure is off and the the chances of getting a meeting uh, go up significantly. Uh, when I was careers, uh, when I was job searching four years ago, my message was basically usually focused on. Uh, making career decisions and wanting input from them to help me with those decisions. Uh, and I found that I got a very, very good acceptance rate to my meeting request. Uh, the other thing you want to do is make it easy to accept. So don't ask for an hour. Uh, don't ask them to come to you. Uh, and the offer of coffee is always a good one. Uh, what I found in my job search was that as soon as they found out that I was unemployed, uh, usually they bought me coffee. So one of the bonuses of this was that I got a lot of free coffee. Um, anyway, it, you send this note to, to Adam and you wait a couple of days. Uh, typically, you'll get a message back within that time and it'll either be, uh, sorry, I don't, know, uh, I don't know Jeff that well and so I wouldn't feel comfortable doing an introduction. And if that happens, fair enough. Uh, and, but in a lot of cases, it'll be something like, uh, well, I talked with Jeff. He's agreed to meet with you. Here's his phone number. Here's his email. Why don't you reach out to him and set up a meeting? Uh, and there you go. And at that point, when you call the person, it's very much a warm call as opposed to a cold call. The person has already agreed to meet with you. Uh, and there you've, you've managed to, to get connected with somebody that you might not otherwise have the opportunity to meet with. Um, when I was doing this, when I was having the meetings with people, I always used to ask them why they agreed to meet with me. And about half of them said that it was an altruistic thing, uh, that they just like to help people who are networking because they benefited from networking themselves in the past. The other half um, basically said something along the lines of, uh, you know, I didn't really care about you at all, but uh, I do care about the person that you asked to introduce you. And so in order to keep them happy, I accepted the meeting request with you. And in the back of my mind, I was thinking, you know what, I don't really care what your purpose or what your reason for accepting was. I'm just glad that I got the meeting. But it was an interesting little research question uh, to, to ask. Um, so there's a tool that to me is probably the most important tool with LinkedIn is just this ability to meet people that you might not otherwise have access to really, really great tool for research, a really, really great tool for getting referrals for jobs, uh, one that you can very easily use if you don't have a very big network. Uh, and um, to me, this is kind of like the, the pot of gold within this platform. So there we've seen some ways of connecting and networking. Uh, and with that, uh, we're going to finish the presentation. Um, it doesn't look like there are any outstanding questions. Um, I wonder if there are any or if we have time for them. Uh, but I'll finish there and thank you for listening. Uh, Jen? We absolutely have time for questions. Yes, no problem. If you just want to raise your hand. There we go. And Jen? Yes, one of my questions was regarding the skills page that you had. Um, where we um, where it shows all of the ones that we selected based off of the suggestions in their database. Will those um, specific target words be uh, also generated for people who do searches on us, or will we need to have only those target words in, say, our personal description of who we are? Does that make sense? Uh, I'm not sure the part about uh, generated for the people who do searches on us. So are you, in the very beginning of your presentation, you talked about engine, um, search engine optimization. Yes. Yes. So and to use specific words so that way we would be, you know, maybe one of the top five people who come up in searches. Right. With those words in our skill set that we choose, based off of um, 
their database, will those words also be used in that or only uh, the words that we type in in, say, our personal description? Well, so when somebody is doing an advanced search, what they will do is um, they would have a paid version of LinkedIn that gives them uh, multiple ways to search. But typically what they're going to do is they're going to, in their search window, they're going to input, let's say, a list of 15 skills that they are looking for people that, that fit that skill set. They're then going to click the search button, and LinkedIn is going to go into the database of 400 million users, uh, and it's going to pop up um, a, a list of, of people that fit the search to the person that did the search, uh, and it's going to be based on best matches. So the top result is if, if there's a result for 15 skills uh, and the person meets all 15 of them, then the top result will have all 15. Uh, and there might be three people who have all 15, they would appear at the top, and then next you'll have the people who have 14 of those skills. And all of those skills are coming from that skill section that you have created. Does that make okay. sense? Yes. Uh, and they will be, they also are presented with the search options when they start to type in a skill, it's going to, they're going to get that same drop down of, of skills to choose from. Uh, and you know, so the, the, basically you can be pretty sure that there's going to be a, a good match there between the skills being searched for and the skills that uh, regular users are listing in their skill sections. Thank you. Okay. Uh, May, you've got a question. What would be the best method to ask to connect with Eric? Uh, if you wanted to connect with me, what you would do is based on the fact that we've now, uh, we kind of sort of know each other from this presentation, uh, you could go to my profile, you could click the connect button, uh, you could personalize your message and tell me how wonderful you found the webinar, uh, and ask to connect. Uh, one thing with connecting also is that there are, there are a couple of options for connecting uh, depending on, on how active the person is on LinkedIn. So in my case, uh, because I publish articles on LinkedIn, there's also an option for people to follow me as opposed to connect with me. Um, the difference is, is that connecting is kind of like two-way love. It's going to be a, uh, I'll, I'll see everything that you share and you will see everything that I share uh, and we'll be able to message each other and so on and so forth. Uh, the following uh, means that uh, I don't have a choice whether, like I can't turn down your follow request, uh, but what will happen is by following me, you will be updated when I share things. So if I write a new article or if I share an article, uh, that will come up in your homepage. Um, and so, for example, if you wanted to follow Richard Branson, it's unlikely that he would accept your, your connection request. But by following him, you would be able to be kept updated on everything that he does on LinkedIn, uh, and so you would still have the benefit of his, his knowledge and experience. Okay? Uh, so it's up to you. If you would like to connect and you'd like to be able to message back and forth and ask me questions, then uh, by all means connect. Just let me know who you are. Uh, if you personalize your message, then you will not be one of the 12. Um, at that point, I would have enough to go on in terms of deciding whether to accept or not, and in your case, I would accept. Because I'm always looking to be connected to other career professionals. Hope that answers that question. Are there any others? Okay, if there aren't any other questions, uh, I'd like to thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, I hope this was useful to you. And uh, yeah, um, enjoy your LinkedIn life. Stephanie has a question. Oh, okay. You're Stephanie. muted though, Stephanie. Make sure you unmute first. We can't hear you. You're okay. I've unmuted you. Go ahead. Stephanie, do you want to put it in the chat? There you go. <laughs> oh, I, we can hear you, Stephanie. Oh, no question, just saying thank you. Uh, okay. <laughs> thank you very much. Um, Eric, thank you very much. This is Katie.
Um, <laughs> thanks very much. So just so everyone knows, we have recorded the session. Um, as I said, there's a lot of people that are on annual leave right now. Um, and so we will be sending that out. Um, we also hope to have future, um, just a little bit more capacity building surrounding LinkedIn. We're not sure how that's going to look, um, but stay tuned. And um, yes, I encourage everyone to follow Eric, if or not follow, add Eric to LinkedIn, and hopefully he'll approve your request because he does post a lot of interesting articles um, and information for career practitioners, not just um, in terms of LinkedIn, but also in general. So it can be a helpful tool. Um, and I will be sending out, um, yeah, I'll be sending out the recording um, with a little bit of a survey just to follow up on kind of questions or information gaps that may exist and how we can meet those in the future. So thank you everyone for logging on. I hope you guys have a fabulous um, end of March. I guess there's only one more day left. And um, thanks, Eric. We'll be in touch. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much, everyone. Thanks, Margaret, for the assistance as well. Yeah, You're thanks. welcome. Thank you. Okay. Have a good day, everyone. And to log out, you just click on the red X on the top right-hand side of your screen, or if you're on a Mac, it's the little red dot.